Hello everyone, this is Vibal Buroid and I welcome you back to my YouTube channel. My dear friends, in this particular section, we are going to talk about chemical kinetics. And under chemical kinetics, we are going to discuss about complex reactions. So, my dear friends, first of all is, what do you mean by complex reactions? There are certain reactions which do not follow simple or first order or second order or third order kinetics. Such reactions are called as complex reactions. Now, how many types of complex reactions we have? Okay, they are of three types. First, reversible reaction or what we call it as opposing reactions. Second, consecutive reactions. And the third one, parallel reactions. So we begin with the first one, reversible reactions. These are the reactions, my dear friends, which occurs in forward as well as reverse reactions. In other words, we can say that the products recombine, resulting in the formation of the original reactants. Now, under reversible reactions, we have various subtypes, which depends upon the molecularity of the reaction. That is, the number of molecules of the reactants and products. So we begin with the first one, the most simplest one, and that is monomolecular reaction being opposed by a monomolecular reaction. So it's about interconversion of A to B. So when A gets converted into B, that's a forward reaction, the rate constant of which is denoted as K1. And when that B is being converted back to A, that's a reverse reaction and the rate constant for that is denoted as K minus 1. An example for this purpose is trans-azobenzol being interconvertible to cis-azobenzol. So you can see in this case trans and cis-azobenzol, one molecule on both the sides. So both of them are monomolecular. It's uh, interconversion taking place. The trans and the cis is with respect to the benzene rings. In the trans case, you can see the two benzene rings are in two opposite planes. Whereas in case of cis, the two benzene rings are in the same plane. We go into the second subtype of reversible reaction where a monomolecular reaction is opposed by a bimolecular reaction. So it's like a general reaction is A interconvertible to B and C. So where the forward reaction where A gets converted to B and C, the rate constant is given as K1 and then B and C, the products are combining to give the original reactant that is A. So that's a reverse reaction and the rate constant is indicated as K minus 1. The examples to serve this purpose are first is the decomposition of PCL5. It gives you PCL3 and Cl2. So that is one molecule of PCL5 gives you total two molecules. One of PCL3 that is Cl2. So that becomes a bimolecular reaction. And if you consider the reverse one, that is, the PCL3 and Cl2 recombines, resulting in the formation of the original reactant, that is PCL5. The, similarly, we have a second example also, decomposition of ammonium chloride, resulting in the formation of one molecule each of ammonia and hydrogen chloride, which in turn, in the reverse reaction, ammonia and hydrogen chloride recombines to give you the original ammonium chloride. Next, we have a third segment under reversible reaction where a bimolecular reaction is opposed by a monomolecular reaction. Okay, and that is going to be A plus B. This is more bimolecular reaction. It's converted into C. And in the reverse reaction, the C the in turn gets converted into A and B. So K1 is the rate constant for the forward reaction and K- minus is the rate constant for the backward reaction. So in that case, the simplest example is two molecules of nitrogen dioxide will combine, resulting in formation of a single molecule of dinitrogen tetroxide. And in the reverse reaction, that one molecule of dinitrogen tetroxide breaks and that results in the formation of two molecules of nitrogen dioxide. My dear friends, we move to the fourth subtype of reversible reaction where we have two molecules on the left hand side, two molecules on the right hand side. So we say bimolecular reaction opposed by a bimolecular reaction. So in this case, we have H2 plus I2 
and it is getting combined to give you two molecules of HI. Similarly, the two molecules of HI breaks down into one molecule each of H2 and I2. Okay, we also have another example that is acetic acid, a carboxylic acid reacting with ethanol, that is an alcohol. And you guys know very well that is a reaction between a carboxylic acid and alcohol results in the formation of an ester. And we have over here that is ethyl acetate and of course you get water. So K1 over here is the rate constant for the forward reaction which is nearly three times that of the backward reaction and the rate constant of which is K minus one. Now my dear friends remember thermodynamically every chemical reaction must be reversible but in most of the cases what happens is that in the initial stage the forward reaction is so dominating that the rate of the reverse reaction is negligibly small however we can also have reactions where forward and reverse reactions are moving in equal rates and thereby the reaction reaches to an equilibrium and then we introduce a concept called as equilibrium constant which is indicated by k and it is defined as the ratio of the rate constant of the forward reaction to that of the reverse reaction so capital K is equal to K1 divided by K minus 1. And during the course of the reaction at any particular time T, the rate of the forward reaction is then given as K1A minus X minus of K minus 1X, where X is the concentration of the reactant which is consumed at the time T, and A is the initial concentration of the reactant. Now, my dear friends, at equilibrium, the rate of forward is equal to that of the reverse reaction. So we have K1, A minus of Xe is equal to K minus of 1, Xe, where that E term stands for equilibrium. And as I said, that the equilibrium constant K is equal to K1 upon K minus 1, so we have equal to xe upon a minus of xe okay so this becomes the for the expression for the equilibrium constant and my dear friends this is about par, uh, uh, reactions called as reversible or opposing reactions we now go into the second type of complex reactions and that is called as consecutive reactions my dear friends consecutive reactions are those reactions which occurs in a sequence so it can be represented as A getting conveyed into B, the rate constant is K1, B is getting conveyed into C, the rate constant is K2. Now this can be graphically shown by the variation of the concentration of the various species with respect to time or what we call it as the progress of the reaction. So if you can have a look over here, initially we have the reactant A. Okay, and as the reaction proceeds, the concentration of A continuously decreases. B is also called as a reaction intermediate. So initially its concentration is zero, but as the reactant starts reacting with the progress of the reaction, its concentration increases, it reaches the maximum, and then it drops down. When we talk about the final product that is C, initially we don't have the final product, so the concentration is zero. And with the progress of the reaction, the concentration of C increases continuously. Now, at any point of time, if the initial concentration of A is represented as A0, then that is being represented in terms of, or it is being related in terms of, the concentration of A, B, and C by a very simple expression, and that is A0 is equal to concentration of A plus concentration of B plus concentration of C. All right? Now let us consider some of the examples so you understand this consecutive reactions to a much more effective manner. The first reaction is decomposition of dimethyl ether. So initially it decomposes and it gives you acetaldehyde, which further decomposes into methane and carbon monoxide. 
okay you also have some uh, molecule of hydrogen gas also but then of course you get methane and carbon monoxide so in this case the dimethyl ether is considered as a acetaldehyde CH3CHO is considered as B and methane and carbon monoxide is considered as C. We have our second example also that is hydrolysis of diethyl succinate. Okay, now there are two ethyl groups. Okay, that is C2H5. Now when it undergoes hydrolysis, the ethoxy group is going to be replaced by uh, H of water so as a result of which you get a carboxylic group but then both of which are not going to be replaced simultaneously they take place one after the other and therefore first we have replacement of one ethoxy group and that's going to be an intermediate and then finally the second one is also getting replaced and thereby we get succinic acid okay so as a result of which diethyl succinate is the initial reactant a and succinic acid is the final product that is C. We have a nuclear reaction as an example over here which talks about the radioactive disintegration by emission of alpha particles. So in this case we have radium it emits an alpha particle resulting in radon and which further emits alpha particle resulting in the formation of a final product that is polonium. All right. So, my dear friends, this is about consecutive reactions. We now move on to the last segment of this uh, video, and that is about the parallel reactions. My dear friends, parallel reactions are those in which the reactants react simultaneously, but in more than one different ways. And as a result of which, you get different products. So A giving you in one way a product B, in another way it gives you a product C. So K1 is the rate constant when you get a product B and K2 is the rate constant when you get a product C. So at any point of time, the rate of the reaction of A is the summation of rate of formation of V and rate of formation of C. So that can be given as K1 A minus of X plus K2 A minus of X where A is the initial concentration and X is the concentration of the reactant consumed. Now some of the examples we consider. The first example is we carry out chlorination of toluene. Of course when I say there are different ways obviously the conditions are different. So when you consider chlorination of toluene, toluene is methyl benzene. So in one way, it results in the formation of orthochlorotoluene. And in the second way, we get parachlorotoluene. Similarly, we can also carry out nitration of phenol using different conditions and you get different products. So those different products are, we can get orthonitrophenol, we can get metanitrophenol or we can get paranitrophenol. Okay, so in this way, the nitration of phenol okay, undergoes parallel reactions and resulting in the formation of three different products. All right, so this is my dear friends about parallel reactions and this is all about complex reactions. All right, where we have learned first of all, what do you mean by complex reactions? And then there are three types. The first one, reversible. The second one, consecutive. And the third one, parallel reactions. So this is, my dear friends, the first segment of uh, chemical kinetics. In the next segment, please tune to my channel for the next segment. And there we will be discussing about thermal chain reaction. But till then, Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.